Hello everyone, welcome again to Casual Magic. Today I want to give you the update on the results from my next Workplace Magic the Gathering Draft Tournament. It was fun. Actually, we had the biggest turnout yet. We had 22 people. That includes employees and spouses. And what we do is, through our company's entertainment committee, uh, which, you know, is for all the drawings, picnics, parties, things like that, uh, we've actually had a magic event now um, going for just about a year, uh, once every quarter, and we'll pay the employee's entrance fee up to a certain number of employees, and we'll pay that $10 entry fee. So with the $10, you'll get the packs that you draft with, and you'll get a, uh, a bonus card, and then there's prize support. And then on top of it, we buy additional prize support. So I'll get into that a little bit. I'll show you all the, uh, the stuff that came out of it. But first, I need to show you what I got. So going into this, I looked up as much information as I could online, and I basically saw that the red and white vehicles and green and white pairings, they actually were probably the best. And I was really, really getting my hopes up. And at least my first pack, I opened it up. It's a white card, it's a decent one, I've got some energy, uh, I can power through this. And then the green cards weren't coming my way, ever. And as it turns out, the person to my left was basically doing mono green, the person to my right was doing green and white, who I ended up playing against later. And as a result, they got basically nearly every single green card. So little by little, I was looking for other cards with energy to be able to uh, help support that first rare that I picked. And unfortunately, little by little, I got blue, and then I kept getting more blue cards, and then eventually thought, ah, to hell with it. I guess I'll just pick blue as a second color. And so I ended up getting white and blue, my least favorite <laughs> combination again. So... You can watch my previous draft video for um, Eldritch Moon. I got white and blue. It was nuts, and unfortunately, that's what I got into this time again. So we'll just kind of step through what I did as far as drafting and a strategy. Um, start off Eddie Hail Hawk or Eddie Trailhawk, if I could say that right. And just basically a flyer, um, get energy when it comes into the battlefield, and I can get something else flying, but mainly just to get a small flyer and some energy. Fairgrounds Warden, it's a good card to at least exile something. You can get it out reasonably cheaply and lock something down. Thriving Ibex, mainly just to get energy. Console Shield Guard, you get energy and also you can make something else unblockable. Actually, one time when I had them both out, I made each of them uh, unblockable they just targeted each other, so that was kind of funny. This is the card that I had in my very first pack, and I basically built my entire strategy around. So I'll just read through this one because it's kind of the, I guess, the, the main cog in the engine of my deck. Aetherstorm Rock, it's two of anything, two white, creature bird. It's a 3-3 flyer, and whenever Aetherstorm Rock or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get an energy counter. Whenever Aetherstorm Rock attacks, you may pay two energy. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on it and tap up to one target creature defending player controls. So if you're able to build up a board state, you can get energy with them. If you have trouble with defenders in the way, attack with them, and as long as you have energy, you can lock something down and you can give them a counter. So he's very flexible. I know he's super, super cheap right now, but he still has a lot of versatility as a flyer. I mean, 3-3 three, three, uh, flyer for 4 mana, that's not bad. But he definitely has an upside. So I would probably use him in some commander deck in the future, uh, just as another kind of mid-range flyer. And as long as I keep putting out more and more energy, at least it allows me to tap something that I don't like on the other side. Definitely got a lot of use out of him and drew him almost every single game. So he was probably the one fantastic card that I had in my deck. Skywirl Harrier, just a large bird. I just saw things online saying, you know, he's not the best, but if you need a larger flyer, he's a safe way to go. Moving into my blue stack, 
Thriving Turtle. I don't know how many of you have actually played with this, but this is actually kind of funny. And I know you can spend energy to give him a plus one, plus one counter, but I think I did that only once. Other than that, he's pretty much just there to get energy. Vulcan Blade Master, he's just a filler card. World Fast Wingsmith, if you put an artifact into play, then you can give him flying until end of turn, which I used in my very last game. I had a decent board state. I put out a artifact thopter with haste. I made him a flyer. I was able to use that rare card, the uh, Aetherstorm Rock, to tap my opponent's flyer. And then I had another creature I can make unblockable, and I swung through for something like 14 damage on one turn when his life total was 11, and I won the last game. That was nuts. <laughs> uh, High Tide Hermit, this one is the really funny one. You get four energy counters when it comes into play, but you can pay two, and that way it can attack as if though it didn't have Defender. And one game when really not much was going on, I did just that. I, I didn't have any other energy cards coming into play. This dude's just kind of sitting out there. And so I went ahead and I spent it, so that way at least I could get a 4-4 attack a couple turns in a row. So, a little bit versatile. I mean, mainly it's just basically out there as a super wall, and you get energy out of it, but at least you have the flexibility to attack with them if you need to. Experimental Aviator, just basically to get Thopters. Gear Seeker Serpent, this one's fun. Um, he basically has Affinity, so it'll cost one less for each artifact you control, and I was able to get him out for six instead of seven. And then you can spend that same six to make him unblockable. Great. For a common, great. Just a flyer. Now in focus, Snare Thopter. Four for three two flyer with haste. It's decent. I mean, as an uncommon, it's good. You get him out, you attack them, it's a flyer, great. You know, couldn't really ask for more. This is the one vehicle that I actually used. Uh, I think I only used it about once. The, the main thing about it was it has Menace, so it has to be blocked by two or more creatures. That's the only reason why I chose this one over another vehicle, was because at least this causes some awkward blocking situations. And in the end, I sacrificed this for a couple of my uh, opponent's creatures, and I thought it was a completely fair trade-off. This thing got blown away. His two creatures died, and then I could just kind of keep punching through with my small stuff. So, those are my remaining creatures. As far as spells go, somehow, this was my one sorcery. I didn't get to use it, though. I think it's excellent, though. Um, I, the, probably the only good way that I could have run it was if I had more of them, and I had more artifacts in my deck to be able to trade off for other artifacts or creatures. I do think it's a good card, but I unfortunately just had one, and to be honest, I never played it, so it probably just could have been traded out for something more useful. Enchantments, I don't know why these were passed to me. This is probably one of my favorite commons in the entire set, because the enchanted creature can't attack, block, or crew vehicles. So that was just part of my lockdown strategy to say, okay, that's great, you've got vehicles, or you've got some sort of big, beefy creature, too bad. It's not going to do anything. Moving on to enchantments, the main theme, lockdown. I have three malfunctions, two aether meltdowns. So with malfunctions, basically it permanently taps, and then aether meltdown, you can flash it in, and the enchanted permanent gets minus four, minus zero. As an upside, you also get two energy, which, for two mana, that's pretty decent. But it was nice, that way my opponent could put out something uh, that's like a 4-4. Four, four. And I think, oh no, there's the 4-4, four, four. it's going to be crewing that vehicle soon. And with Flash, I could just basically say, oh, in response, and then put on an Aether Meltdown. Another fun thing about Malfunction, I used this on an opponent's creature at one point during the game. He flashed it, so that fell off, his creature came back into play. Next turn, I immediately played a second malfunction. <laughs> and he said, how many of those things do you have? And I said, just keep playing creatures and you'll find out. So, again, it was kind of cool that these kept getting past my way in later packs. And at that point, once I knew I was kind of sticking with blue, it was very, very nice to pick up multiple copies of that. As far as lands, I just went 
eight planes, eight islands, nothing special. And the things I passed up didn't uh, didn't exactly make the cut. They probably could have went in there, but really for spells, I, I wasn't looking for specific artifact or enchantment destruction. Um, could have given me more energy, but not so great. Nice to do three damage. I seriously considered switching this for that shrewd negotiations, but I just thought I'd save shrewd negotiations for a emergency. Built to last, just didn't really have too much artifact stuff. Pressure point, I didn't want to have a card that can only tap a creature for one turn when I had other ones that could tap them permanently, so that's the main reason why I passed on this. Aether Trade Winds, I really, really thought about having this in there for some sort of removal, but in the end it just didn't make the cut. Uh, Revolutionary Rebuff, it's a decent counterspell, but in the end I just built my deck a little bit more aggressively than I thought I would. I guess just old habits die. Um, the Puzzle Knots, I got three of them, didn't really use them, didn't consider them. Demolition Stomper, this is the one vehicle that I got that I ended up passing on. This was our promo. Yay! So as a player, for every person who played in our group, we got this. It's the buy box promo. But hey, shiny card. I'll take it. We couldn't use it while playing, but at least we got a shiny card. Well, that's one that I just bought. Uh, Servos, Mountains, Nature's Way. This is the one green card that came my way. Renegade Tactics, Thriving Grubs. These are kind of late cards that I got stuck with. I don't know how, but actually I got the pair of uh, Live Fast and Die Young. And then another puzzle knot. And then the other cool thing, because I got the box of extra prize support, I got another buy a box promo. So actually I have two of those. Now one other cool thing, he had drawings during the contest. So I got dun -dun -dun -dun, this junk metal box. But the cool thing about it, it has a horse on it. Pretty. <laughs> And separately, I had someone else, they said, oh, hey, do you want to trade for that? And I said, no way. I know someone who's totally into horses, and I'm already collecting a bunch of horse cards, which, as you can see, I'm collecting horses and pegasuses and unicorns because they are obsessed with horses, and someday I want to give this to them. So if anyone out there has any recommendations for any other type of horse cards, please let me know in the comments. I want to know what else is out there. I don't necessarily need it to be Creature Horse or Creature Pegasus, but as long as it has some type of uh, horse-related artwork, I'm definitely interested in it. So that was an additional prize that was included in a drawing. And then, how did I do? Somehow, I lucked out, and I finished third again. So... As a result, I got my four packs for finishing third, um, which I just decided three Kaladesh and one Eldritch Moon just for fun. Who knows? Maybe there's a Liliana in there. And then because of the extra prize support, we had the booster box plus a few other packs, so each person got three packs on top of it. So as you can see, this is my haul from this weekend. and. To go back to what I was saying during the opening of my video, we got the packs that we drafted with, we got the prize support if we could finish well enough, we got this guaranteed prize support for all of our players, we got the promo card if you're just playing in the event, I had the extra promo card from buying the booster box, and then this was just from a random drawing. And all of this that you see here cost me zero dollars. I can't tell you how much I love my company. I love it. I love them. They are so generous for allowing us to do this and to build a magic community at our work just from a, a few people who will occasionally get together at lunch and play games of Commander to actually bringing in people, their spouses, their children, and build this magic community at these tournaments once every three months and actually have the company pay for it. I'm very, very thankful. And if you have the opportunity to try and do that at your workplace, 
where you're able to get some sort of company money to fund something like this, I highly encourage it. It's a great, I would say, team building exercise to be able to bring together people from different departments, different age levels, people that don't necessarily work together or communicate together on a regular basis, yet in true Magic the Gathering fashion, you're part of this unique community and communicating in ways that you never thought you would before because you share something in common. And I really find that special in a way. So that's my amazing haul from this week and I'll, uh, I'll probably open up these Kaladesh packs in following videos just because I have another plan series coming up and I need some filler in there in the meantime because I have a lot of editing to do on those videos. So I think these will be coming out in separate videos in the next coming weeks. But until then, best of luck with all of your Kaladesh drafts and until next time, good luck. And all of this that you see here cost me zero dollars.